Episode 8, Sirens of the Lambs. Episode number eight of the Adventures in Lollygagging podcast. This is an actual play RPG podcast using the Zweihander RPG system. I've got six players around the table. I am your GM, your game master, Jeff, or their game master. Uh, and I, I hope everyone has read up on the character death rules for Zweihander for this this week because I feel I feel like we're going to break that seal tonight. I feel like that might happen. Is everyone excited? What? Yes. Yeah. Uh, sure. Yeah, in, in, a, in a weird inverse, it's going to be that the ship sinks, and the only person who lives is Sophia. That's like it's going to be, that's, that's how it's going to oh, work. Shoot. <laughs> that's tragic either way. Yeah, so we just killed a character last night in our, our, our Dungeons & Dragons campaign, our 5th edition campaign, which is nearing its end. We killed a long-running fan favorite character. Everyone loved him. Everyone's sure. favorite. Everyone's favorite. Young man. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, <laughs> poor poor guy. And so, I feel like we'll just keep that going for tonight. So yeah, You killed a child, by the way. What? You killed a child. He's like 18, 17. 17. He's... Child in the United States. Hey, I didn't do it. <laughs> I think his big mouth did. It did. So... <laughs> It's exactly what it was. It was big mouth. Uh, all right. So, do we recall what where we're at for this week? What happened on our last episode? What do you all remember? Should we start at the end? Should we start? I mean, that's the best place to start, right? We're Bruno was boat. sleeping. Yeah, you're on a boat. The end. That's true. The boat is going where? Going to Buckland's ruin. That's true. It's true. And we all know that you're going there because you're on this long, perilous job. With the hope of some future payout uh, from a man named Harold Zeiger. Uh, and uh, you're specifically taking this ferry to get there. But something happened along the way where I asked a question. You asked us where we were sleeping, I asked, and I already knew. <laughs> I asked, like, where's everyone sleeping? You sleeping above deck, below deck? And Ashley was immediately, uh, immediately suspicious. A couple of people slept uh, above deck. Those of you who slept in the hold, you're having a good night. You're just sleeping yeah. away. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Bears just with the animals curled up with animals. a like a little baby lamb. It's beautiful. Just grab uh, one for a pillow. Yeah, it's great. And on deck, however, the perilous siren song began to permeate the air. And it seemed to affect Zofia, who uh, our our gnomish friend who was lured to the edge, the starboard edge of the ship. And not able to quite see the origins, but notice that it was probably behind this outcropping a rock, jumped into the water. And uh, currently, Erwin and Bruno and Emma Lee are on deck, just in the state of waking up. Uh, Erwin's on the edge, kind of shouting for her to swim towards us. Now, what's really tragic is that, I mean, honestly, Zofia has a very important piece of information, or at least an interesting piece of information that she has not shared with everybody. And do we, Zofia, do you remember what piece of information that was? I do. I had perused the various pieces of the ship and realized that there seems to be something off about the dimensions. Right. And, you're getting the you're yeah. getting the subtle the subtle hints that there might be some sort of smuggling compartment here. It was going to be breakfast conversation tomorrow morning. Sure, sure. <laughs> uh, and now if you die, no one's ever going to know about that. Um, so we ended the episode with Zofia critically failing an incredibly important secret awareness test uh, that I can explain to you now what it's going to result in, and it's going to result in you, unfortunately, starting off the uh, the combat that we're about to have, surprised, uh, unaware of this creature below you. So I need everyone on deck, and then I need Zofia, who's in the water, to go ahead and roll your initiative. All right, so uh, let's start with the woman of the hour. Zofia, where'd you end up? 18. 18 that's really good that's that's amazing i mean not as amazing as the siren that's got their their hand on your ankle but pretty darn amazing uh siren just barely beats you uh with a 19 or at least oh. siren one beat you with a 19 uh then uh let's see who else is awake uh, emily what do you got 15 all right do you say siren one yes oh 
right? <laughs> it's just one, one, right? Is one. I felt like it was implied that she was looking at one of them that was on the rocks that was 15 yards and away, and then she feels is... something else grabbing her. Uh, the octopus. Yes. Yes. An octopus. Sirens tend to work together. Well, sometimes anyway. Uh, Bruno, what do you got? Bruno has a 18. 18. Very good. Uh, so between. Wait, I lied. Oh. 14. 14. That's entirely oh. different than 18. It is. <laughs> That's not even in the same realm. Uh, and then Erwin, what do you got? I have 14. I thought I rolled well with a 6, but apparently not. <laughs> so Bruno and Erwin, uh, check your, your bonuses and see who's got the higher. My uh, perception bonus, right? Perception yeah. is 5. Mine is 5 as well. Dude, it's a uh, roll off. I think it's just a straight up roll off. Yeah, just 1d10. Oh, oh, Bruno crushed Bruno you. Bruno is number one. So Bruno, then it'll be Erwin. Okay. So we have an interesting combat going on here because we have two folks in the hold that um, uh, that are not yet awake. You know who I got to roll for? I got to roll for these two crewmen that are up here as well. Forgot to do that. Oh, that's no good at all. So crewman one. There's two of them? In crewman <laughs> two. They don't get yes. a real name. They do, but you you didn't talk to them, so you don't know it yet. You're not I'm not it's spoilers. Oh, okay. They're very important. One of them's name is Gabriel. It's really strange. Um <laughs> Hopefully you'll save my life prior to introduction. So yes. we're not gonna like pause this. We're for... gonna be like, Sophia, hold on a second. <laughs> so we're gonna go through the ladder once. And then um, I'm going to s- allow anyone who's in the hold still, and so that would be uh, Bear and Chovy, to then uh, join in as the sounds of people shouting and whatnot upstairs uh, will allow you to get on the ladder at that point. So it's like you're not around. Okay, so it's going to get into this. Again, we might lose somebody tonight. I can't wait. I'm going to kill my wife's character. Uh, so... Um, it's going to be Siren 1 and Siren 2. So Siren 1 right now is going to go. And because of your critically failed awareness test, um, you are starting the this round surprised, um, which means the Siren that has, has their hand gripped around at this point is slowly and quietly underneath the water as you didn't see it coming up or you weren't able with your awareness to be able to see the stealthy swimming of this partnered uh, this partnered siren. Um, all right, so uh, this uh, this siren is going to kind of pull you into the water a little bit and try to knock you out. And with over a 90 on the die, we'll fail miserably, all right? All right, so that uh, knockout is ineffective. Uh, let's see, so that was one AP. I think with her second AP, she's going to, hmm. I think she's going to make an attack so she can hopefully use her stinging tentacle. So, all right. All right, so that's a that's a four and a success. Uh, so, um, when so these creatures have what's called stinging tentacles. So when these creatures deal damage uh, as their op, uh, uh, at their option, they can force a foe to resist a stunning blow. So um, because you're surprised, I don't think you're able to parry. Is that correct? Yeah, I think that's yeah. the thing that's correct. Uh, okay, so I think it's just going to do damage, and I rolled minimum damage. Uh, I rolled a one. So uh, you take nine points of damage. When surprised, you also suffer an additional 1d6 fury die and damage. Thank you very much for that. Uh, so add three to that, so take 12. 12 points of damage. And so at their op- so when these creatures, again, deal damage at their option, they can force the foe to resist a stunning blow. So I'm going to go ahead and take advantage of that. And so uh, you need to resist toughness. Going back to the damage. Mm-hmm. 12 goes past my second threshold. Okay, it exceeds it. It exceeds my second one. Okay, so then you're going to move down to uh, moderately, wounded. moderately wounded, and we'll we'll roll. You'll have to roll for a moderate, uh, moderately wounded um, injury. injury. Okay. okay, so let's start there. Go ahead and roll your injury. So roll a d6. Again, it's the you want to avoid a six here. 
Five. Okay, so you avoided your injury. So now, because this creature is going to go ahead and take advantage of this ability that they have to force to force you into a stunning blow, uh, go ahead and try to resist toughness, please. That is a critical fail. Oh boy. Uh, okay, that's absolutely no good at all. Um, you begin your turn with one less AP. So you're going to begin your turn with one less AP, and because it's a critical fail, uh, I'm going to go ahead and say you're going to lose two AP at the start of your next turn instead uh, with a critical failure. Okay. Um, rather than have her get like an extra attack or something like that. So, But you'll still have one AP to try to move. Um, but So that is the end of the Siren's turn. It is now your turn, Zofia, at 18. So at this point, I am... You are stunned, so you have one a one AP's worth of action okay. points. I am no longer under their spell in the sense that I don't have to just keep moving forward. Oh, you to no, them. no, 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 okay. yeah, that's 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 been broken. Okay, and yeah. I now know that there's two. Well, you actually you, you so the, with these the, with these creatures, like you, when you first hear the sound, you actually have to make the resolve test, which you failed. But then once you see the creatures, or you enter into like a, to a dangerous area, and so I treated that like. Oh, excuse me, when you enter into a dangerous area, so I treated that like you jumping into the water, that's dangerous. That's sure. when you got your second resolve, and that's when it dawned on you, wait, this is probably bad. Mm-hmm. And then you saw, and it was just a little too late, and you're about 15 yards away uh, from the ship. So, um... Okay, so I have one AP that I can spend. Mm-hmm. All right, so just remember that with movement... Especially when you're in like the water, like when you're, there's movement subtypes in Zweihander, and so whenever you go to spend AP for a movement action, and if part of that movement is one of those subtypes, like swimming is, it, it increases the AP that you have to spend by one. And when you're swimming, don't forget it's BB minus one, so your brawn bonus minus one. Uh, but you had an, you had a trait that you wanted. To- yeah. So Zofia, as a boatman, has battened down the hatches. So. When using the movement subtype of swim, you do not have to add the additional one action point cost. Perfect. Okay, so you can try to swim away. Um, so remember that if you're swimming away, this this creature has the ability to take an opportunity attack. There's also maneuver. Maneuver doesn't get you very far, though. I don't have enough AP left for that. Oh, yeah, maneuver's two. Good call. All right, so you're going to try to hustle, and I will go ahead and take an opportunity attack. And that's a 94. She swipes at you uh, as you're splashing away and doesn't quite manage to land. You can feel the, the gush of the water as like her, her, her claw just goes past you. And, uh, but you manage to, manage to make it a few yards away from her, but you're still not clear. you still got a little bit of time and this creature is in the water. Um, okay, so you are a couple yards away. Um, then it'll be Emma's, Emma Lee's turn. So you're you're probably somewhere relatively centered on the boat, probably not, because yeah. you were waking up Bruno as opposed yeah. to immediately running to the railing. So what would you like to do? Um, I'll head over towards where Irwin is on the okay. railing. All right, so that's one AP just to just to move yeah. Over. Okay, sure, sure, sure. Um, and I would imagine Irwin, you're just kind of pointing or waving uh, or something like that because you were shouting at. Uh, all right. Is there like a ladder or something nearby? That uh, we can drop down into the water or like a rope or something that I can grab and start throwing overboard to help give her a way back up. Uh, yes. So you see that there are ropes that are coiled up uh, on the ground uh, on the actual deck itself. Um, you're absolutely, yeah, absolutely. You can grab one and throw it over if you like. Okay. Yeah. I'll so, do that. Okay. So we'll treat that basically like a, an AP though to, to go over, pick that up and throw it over. And we'll say you have one action point left at this point. Okay, um, I'm going to, I guess, start to try and shimmy down the rope but not jump into the water to see if I can help pull her Okay, up. so you want to climb down? So just like I was just saying with her swimming, a movement subtitle of climbing, like climbing the rope. Can I do that with one arm? I might. I, I mean, I said I'm doing it, so I'm going to try. I just think you're at AP to be able to climb down because it would take the oh, extra AP. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, because right. it would take okay. two. So you can either bank it or you can try to do something can, else with it. I'll do. Can I just do a litany of hatred then at the sirens? Yeah, go right ahead. So that's uh, I should that, that should be an intimidation test. Um, 
Number of folds equal to your your FB. So what's your fellowship bonus? Uh, five. Okay, so yeah, there's only there's only two that um, they're in the area. Only one is currently visible to you, um, but because it's just verbal, I'll, I'll have it count towards the others. So go ahead. Okay, because I do have a point. So is it standard or? Yeah, standard's fine. Okay. I passed. Okay, so so what is it you say? You knew this um, was coming. I'm always going to ask know, this. I know, I know, I'm I know. Always I should have, I should have known. Um, you goddamn fish bones. What do you think you're doing? Get off that goddamn rock. Get out of here. <laughs> Nobody wants you. Okay. I'm so intimidated I like, a little bit. I leaned back from the microphone. Yeah, no, that's okay. Me. That's okay. No, it's good. It's good. Uh, all right. Great. That's awesome. Excellent turn. Uh, so then uh, we're going to move on to Bruno is going to go next. Uh, let's see. Bruno's going to go ahead and... Uh, Sit up straight. Okay. Start rubbing his eyes. Okay, that's two action points. One to sit up, <laughs> one to rub the eyes. Look to the side and say, what's going on? And that's his last action point. Okay, so just a little slow to wake. I like it. I like it. I, I appreciate the RP. Do you uh, act like I haven't been elbowing you for forever? <laughs> <laughs> it took Bruno, like, oh. a solid 20 seconds to get up. I feel like you hit him so hard, he should take, like, six or seven points a day. Uh, <laughs> all right, or when you're at the side, you've seen, uh, you've been joined at this point uh, by, uh, by Emma, who's thrown a rope over. Looking down, you see that, that Sophia's in the water, um, about 10 yards, not actually, not 10 yards, what am I talking about? About three or four yards, because the, the ship's only about maybe nine feet, 10 feet off the water, um, or the deck is, I should say. And you see her being chased by one of these creatures that just came up out of the water. You watch this all happen, and she's still a good, what was your prom bonus, by the way, uh, Sophia? How far did you move? Um, that's a good question, so my um, three. So in the water below, she's trying to get away. Sophia's trying to swim away, but she's moving. It's just swimming, so she's not moving as quickly as she would on land. And she's being chased by this creature. She's still a good seven, eight, nine yards away, something something in that, in that realm. What would you like to do? To try and deter the creature from chasing her further, I want to load my crossbow and shoot at it. Okay, so how, how many AP to load? For you? It's one. Okay, so one, and so then you're going to attempt a shot. Are you going to try to do just a regular shot, or are you going to try to take aim? What do you want to do? Yeah, I'm going to take aim. Okay. So that gives me plus 10, I think. Yeah, so I'm going to increase the difficulty slightly because it's sure. somewhat dark and you're shooting kind of into water, like mm -hmm. she's in the water. So I'm just going to bump it from standard up to challenging okay. um, just so a little just bit. She's separated, so I'm not going to give you that extra. Like she's at this point, she's not engaged with it. So I'm going to go ahead and just say, just increase it or like. Just balance the difficulty. Out the, uh, to take off the take aim 10 plus 10 bonus. So it'll be yeah, it'll just, Okay. Sounds good. So my chance to attack is going to be uh, 52%. Okay. I rolled a 61. All right. So I missed. We have wonderful amounts of uh, fortune points over in that cup if you would like. She could die. Yeah. She very well could die. <laughs> but she could live. But I've been promising people a character death in this episode. So honestly, by using this, you're really taking away that option. I rolled a 60. Okay. Now down. you have the, the point. Yep. Okay. I went down one hole. You want, you want to try again? I don't think there's a limit to how many you can use. I think you can keep doing it until, you, until I have all the misfortune points. Oh, God. Again... Um, as Bear said, she could die. Or she could live. Or she could die. <laughs> or you could die. Or you both could die. It's That's true. true. That's true. You guys haven't even looked on the port side. It's like a hundred of these. <laughs> They're all sneaking up. This is just a <laughs> this is just a distraction. What would you like to do? I guess I can do it. If, I've only got one so yeah. far, so it's okay. All right, all right. I'm I'll try to crit fail a bunch so that way I can add some yeah. more. There, there, you right. there you go. There you go. That's a team player right there. Oh, <laughs> it's gosh, even worse. No. Yeah. Nope, I went the other, <laughs> other way. Even worse. Yep. Okay. All right. So let me just go ahead and slide this. Yeah, just get, just get that, that little <laughs> no cup more. of fortune points away from Erwin. Uh, all right, so your your crossbow bolt unfortunately sails a little wide and plunks into the water itself. It's a it's a diff it's not an easy shot. Uh, so there's nothing to feel ashamed about. 
However, if she does die, the guilt, I'm sure, will last with you until the end of your days. Uh, okay, so, uh, Erwin, you, I think that's all your AP. Yep. So then it is Siren number two. Siren, that is the one that is over on the rocks. And that one's going to go ahead and start moving in your direction. Um, taking a look at her movement here. This one will go ahead and take... Actually has a fairly decent movement in the water here. Um, more than three or two? More than two. Yes, definitely <laughs> more than two. I mean, they're an amphibious Dear. creature, so I would hope I would hope they can do so. Uh, it's going to swim up, not quite able to get into an engagement with you with two movements, but if she spends all of them hustling, which is in fact what I think I'm going to do, um, or I can just run or swim. It's 21. I can get 21 yards worth of movement, so she can close in on you, I think. But she can't do anything, so that's it. Uh, so we have, so at this point, the second one just speeds across, and you just see this thing leap from the rock, Erwin and Emily, and just begins rapid, rapidly swimming, almost like a shark fin, just flapping around in the water a bit. And as it gets closer and closer, it gets brighter and brighter, <laughs> and it's just... Yeah, there's now a second one that's within range. Uh, Crewman 2 will go next. Uh, He'll call himself George. Um, And so George is going to go ahead and uh, call out below uh, and and just make sure that everyone's heard this. Um, Shouts, etc. And then I think he's going to go ahead and launch it. He's going to pick up various harpoons along the, the ground. Uh, ratcheted up or you know, locked up against the walls of the inside of the deck. Um, I think he's going to go ahead and take one of those and try to do what Irwin could not do and chuck chuck this harpoon. Um, I think he's going to go ahead and throw out the one that is not uh, not immediately next to uh, immediately next to Zofia. So I'm going to go ahead and take a shot here. And I, I gave you, I, I said, I said ten uh, percent to you, right? Yes. Okay. You said challenging. So, because of that, he is going to miss, uh, and you see this this javelin, this harpoon, just go flying through the water and skip once, twice, and then settles into the water. Uh, Zofia is not looking good. Crewman one um, will go even a step further and actually run down halfway down the stairs and shout really loudly into the hole to at this point to awake everyone bear jovi all the various <laughs> all the various animals the wardens etc what's that gretel yes gretel of course you should throw your ferret into the water That'll, 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 that'll help him. her, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Distraction. A little floaty. And so that'll be his turn. And then I'll go ahead and then allow the two of you, so Chovy and, and Barry, you can go ahead and roll your initiative ladder. You can get into the initial ladder at this point. We got Bear and then Chovy. So it's going to go back to the first siren who's going to move now, swim. It's going to take a hustle action. They're going to swim up and then is going to attempt uh, an attack as well. Um, at old Zofia in the water. Uh, and that is going to be an 80, and it's going to miss, but I'm going to go ahead and re-roll that using one of these newfound misfortune points. You'll kill one her, Erwin. And now I'm going to crit fail with an 88. Nice. So oh, that him. sucks. Um, okay. She hits her head on a rock. <laughs> okay. Hey, you rolled an 88 when you did your first crit fail. All right. I did. The other week. So... I'm going to go ahead and say that that's going to take up her last action point. We'll say that's the crit fail. I don't know. Where, where's my cup? For it my, is right here. Okay. So I have Game one. Master. I have a little cup that I keep my misfortune points in, and I put the spent ones to the side. So um, since, since since that was her second action point, she crit, crit failed. I'm going to say her, she's not going to be able to do her second action. She, just, she gets a little discombobulated, flips around, gets a little confused. Uh, Zofia, it is your turn. You have two of them now engaged with you. I'm also going to say that she's so discombobulated that I probably won't afford her an opportunity attack if you were to move. The other one, however, do you have your three action points back? You're no longer a stunning blowed. So I'm going to spend two action points to maneuver. Okay. So you're gonna, okay. Evading the opportunity attacks, and then I will spend one to hustle. Okay. So you'll get to swim a couple more yards. I think between the two, you'll probably swim about three more yards uh, or so. Now you're at this point 
We'll put you at around five yards away from the ship uh, and about three yards separated from these two sirens that are desperately trying to grab you and drag you under. Okay. And I'm definitely looking up, screaming for help. What are you saying? All of my friends. Are you, are you saying anything, anything interesting? Really just death-curling panic, sort of like... Okay. Not check the dimensions like of the ship? No, <laughs> <laughs> just in case I die, I think there's a smuggling compartment. Ah. <laughs> just in case. Just in case. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, so Emma, it is your turn. Emily, sorry. Uh oh, I'm swimming really close to you. I'm getting much closer. About than five I yards was away, but don't forget, there's about about eight or nine yards you have to climb up and over the two dimensional, not three dimensional. I'm almost uh-huh. there. Yeah. Yeah. You just keep thinking that. <laughs> yep. Oh. Um. I'm gonna I'm gonna do what I said I was gonna try and do earlier and I'm gonna You're gonna try to climb it down? Yeah. Okay. So gonna... I can help grab her and scoop her up. Okay. Uh make an athletic check. Okay. Uh standard is fine. Ooh, did not pass. Hey, there's these wonderful <laughs> fortune points in there. No, I'll just not okay. pass. You you didn't critically fail though, correct? No. Okay. No, no, no. So as you as you start to go over to climb down and you, you immediately begin to slip and you quickly grab with your hand to steady yourself and you realize this is this is a bad idea. This is uh, this isn't gonna work. This isn't gonna work. Uh, had you crit failed, I probably would have just had you fall in the water. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so what else do you want to do with your turn at this point? You still got we'll say you still got uh, two action points. Um I don't have like any like weapons that are like long range. Okay. If you look around, they do have a couple like harpoons that are attached to the sides. You saw I can't one of use the crewmen. Two-handed weapons. He literally just threw it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah he, I'm he gonna throw up. a harpoon then. Okay. So, in any way, so uh, so I'm treating them like uh, like javelins, by the way. Um, Okay. Because I don't think there actually is a harpoon, so I'm just treating it like javelin, which is a one. I'm treating it as a one-handed weapon. Uh, it's got a distance of three plus your perception bonus in yards. So what's your perception bonus? Uh, five. Okay, so eight yards. Yeah, that'll get. Yeah, that'll get to them. Uh, so just like just like with Irwin and just like with George, uh, I think it was George. Uh, treat it as challenging. Okay. okay. And it's gonna be uh, athletics or. It's attack. It's oh, your normal combat. My yeah. normal combat. Yeah. Okay. I rolled a thirty, so pass. That's a pass. Okay. Uh, so go ahead and roll damage. Two. Plus Sorry. your combat bonus. Plus yeah, my you combat, your... which is five, so seven. seven. Okay, seven. All right. As it, uh, hang on one second, because I feel like because of your litany of hatred. Oh yeah. Because of your litany of hatred, that actually moves it up one on the threshold. Good so job. It will take. It will. You actually coming do. Coming for you, girl. You see this javelin just just singe right past the shoulder, taking this huge gash, and the water gets filled with this dark, you know, dark liquid, and you can hear the siren just scream out in pain. Good. Uh, okay. <laughs> She's got a family. Okay. I don't care. No one. No one ever cares about my monsters. Everyone Eight just children. wants to kill them all. I just want to Every date time, them, but you know, it doesn't matter the game. Just kill them all. No one ever wants to talk. Uh, okay. Uh, then it'll go to Bruno's turn. Bruno's going to spend two action points okay. to get up. <laughs> that it's what the thing says. No, that's good. That's great. Uh, he gets up, and uh, he will use the last action point to walk to the uh, side of the boat, stretching. Okay. So it's kind of a little groggy. All right. You know, he's not he's not a morning person. Excellent. So much help. Excellent. So much help. Yep. You don't get breakfast. I'm following, following the rules. I can't just get there. Yeah. Understood. I can't see any of this anyway, so I think you're being heroic and trying to save me. Oh, you're thinking wrongly. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Well, at least you're there. There's some people at this table who aren't even there yet. Uh, okay, Chovy, it is your turn. I'll let you get into this now. All right, I'll join the hustle. See what's all about. What's going on? Why is that one shouting? So, uh, from what you could glean from the crewman that was yelling down into the hold, is that there is a passenger overboard and that they're under attack. You look around and you can see that some of the pilgrims seem to be freaking out. The little child, uh, Jasmina, is yeah. is being being is like huddling by her parents, Carl and, and Victoria, as they're they're holding on to her. You see some of the wardens are 
slowly putting, like donning some armor and like they're trying to pull up their pants as they're running and they're like falling down at the same time. Uh, so what do you want to do? I'll just use my points to move out and okay. maybe like load my sling. That's about it. Okay, so you find your sling first. You yeah. probably didn't have it in your hand. And so, and then you try to hustle as far as you can. Um, probably not, probably, you can probably get up to the deck um, with, with that, but probably not to the edge. Uh, and then Erwin, your turn. You've been joined now. Edge. Round two of taking aim, loading crossbow, and sure. firing at the siren to okay. try and scare it away. Okay. This time, I rolled a 54, which still fails by two. There are still quite a few. I, I'm, I'm fine with that. Right <laughs> okay. Think about what just, happened last time. I'm just he doomed. used it, I'm and he crit failed. Fail. I did crit fail. It actually made it worse. He mm-hmm. has another one that he can crit fail with again. That's true. I can't wait. Uh, okay, Siren 2 is now going to swim up uh, with one and is going to go ahead and take a... Yeah, it's going to go ahead and take a shot. Take a swing, I should say, with a razor fin. Uh, and unfortunately, with a 62, we'll miss, but I will go ahead and spend my other misfortune point here. Because... Crit fail, crit I'll stop it. What are the, ch- what are the chances <laughs> of that happening? Oh, are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> No, 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 never mind, sorry. Uh, that is still a fail, though. I actually rolled even worth was a 73. <laughs> you are the slipperiest little gnome. You're not even that little, actually. I am you? actually very little. I'm four foot nine and 95 pounds in France. Chubby, can you remind everyone how small you are <laughs> so we really know what little means? Yes, I am 40 pounds and only three foot eight. Yeah, so why don't you just step <laughs> up? Come on. Okay, Gretel's kids still use smaller. that phrase, right? Step up? Yep. Okay. Uh, all right, so second siren is going to be very ineffective. I still get one action point. Do I want to try to do something? I think that I'm going to try to do a stunning blow. I have one AP left, um, so I'm going to try to attempt a perilous stunt. I'm going to try to do a stunning blow with you. I'm not going to bank this AP this time. And i got to make an athletics test. So let me see how I do. And I succeed. Uh, and so... I have to resist toughness. And so you resist toughness, and so I made it at challenging, and so you get routine on your, on your resist. I get routine? Yeah, it's the inverse. It's the inverse of what my difficulty check was. I thought that was going to help me. It does not. Well, I it, failed with a 55. It would, would have helped you if you were to roll better. Okay, do you want to sure. use any of those? You can't actually crit fail. What's that? I did. I crit fail. You crit fail? 55. Oh, there's a 54. My bad. Uh, okay, yeah. So you are stunned. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing we did last time. And since you crit failed on it, instead of normally for a stunning blow, you would lose one AP. On your turn, you're going to lose two AP. Okay. Oh, it feels feels okay. Feels right. Feels good. Feels right. <laughs> uh, crewman two. Taking a look. There's not that many of these harpoons left. There's only like two more. And he's gonna grab one. And they're running out of harpoons. And he's gonna chuck. And he's like, "Here we go." Oh God, no. No, that's in the oh. '90s. That's in the '90s. I'm not rolling well tonight. I'm rolling pretty bad. Uh, so. You see another one go. Um, then, I think, I think he'll try to with his other AP since no one else has done it yet. I think he's going to try to do some inspiring words, and he's going to he's going to just shout out, "Swim, swim like your life depended on it." Because if it's if it's uncertain to you, it definitely, most certainly does <laughs> depend on it. And so I'm going to attempt. <laughs> Uh, leadership test. Uh, this is actually going to affect uh, three people. He has an FB of three, so I'll have this affect the three players that are at the railing. Uh, Bruno's not going to count because he's still asleep. Oh, so it's not Bruno, Erwin, and Emily. S- sadly, I failed. Oh. It's gonna be, it, sadly, I failed. So. Oh. Uh, We're just more stressed out now. <laughs> yeah, now you're, now you're really stressed and flailing. Uh, okay, and then it'll go to Bear at this point. You see Chovy right. make a run uh, for the... Uh, for the stairs, you see other people also trying to do so. Uh, what would you like to do? So we just think we're under attack and people are freaking out. Yeah, they're not clear exactly. No one, they they weren't very clear with the message of hey, there are two sirens that are attacking. Your, right. You know, they just said we're <laughs> under attack. And there's a passenger overboard. It's all they've all said. Right. Bear will get up, try to calm down the other uh, people that were in there, like kids and stuff. Okay. Like I'm not gonna let anyone in here. I'll stand at the door. I'll go up by the stairs and okay. block the way. 
Um, because I don't know what's out there. <laughs> okay, why don't you make a? I mean, it sounds like it's you know, it sounds like uh, it sounds like you're trying to like keep every. You're trying to keep. You want to yeah, actually yeah. make a skill I test with this? To, yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay, go ahead. Just make a leadership test. Leadership. Make right. a stand. Just to be like. I got this. Do you have leadership? No. Flip to fail. Then it's flip to fail. Uh, I failed anyway, so <laughs> I rolled Sweet. a seventy. <laughs> okay. Okay, it's not flip to succeed. Unfortunately, everyone's like, "Whoa, what? What do you know?" What, what do you know? You don't know nothing. We're all going to die. We're all going to die. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. So then, uh, <laughs> so the other crewman is going to come back um, after shouting, um, and he is going to join the group at the edge. Um, he is going to, uh, I guess, settle in next to Emily, grab hold of the rope as well, and wait with the hope that maybe Zofia and they can kind of haul her up. Uh, the first siren is going to then close upon Zofia and make yet another attack. This is ridiculous. 91. That's a miss, and I'm all out, so I can't do anything. Um, what else do I want to do? Maybe I will... I think she's going to attempt to choke hold you because that sounds fun. So I'm going to make an athletics test. Uh, let's see if I can pass this. That's a hundred. That's a crit fail. Um, that's a lot of zeros on my dice right now. This is ridiculous. I've rolled so many rolls over 90. I'm wishing you like the worst juju that's right now. That's not very nice. <laughs> <laughs> they have families. They need this. They're hungry. Uh, okay. Do so I that... still need to resist athletics? No, that was a definite fail. Okay. Uh, crit fail. All right, Zofia, since you are stunned, I think we, we screwed this up the first time you were stunned, but you are you remain stunned. You have to make, so at the start of your turn, go ahead and, and try to resist that toughness test. And if you resist, if you succeed at this, you can go ahead and get your AP back. Otherwise, you still only have that one AP to work with. Alrighty. That's cocked. That's what she said. Thank you. I want to say <laughs> it. It's so mature. I gave it myself. Uh, standard, I'm assuming. Uh, I don't remember what I said. Um, sure, that's fine. Fail. Okay. There's there's more. Your life depends on this. Yes, my life. You could that. die. You could die. Or you could live. And so could everybody else tonight. Let's try this again. Crypto? Exactly what I needed. I okay. needed a 38 and I rolled 38. And so you resist and you can get your AP back. Yay. Okay, so you've got your three AP. I do. What do you want to do? Run for your Two life. Two of them are engaged with you right now. So you're, I'm, I think, if I recall, you're about five or six yards away from the uh, from the actual boat. There's a rope dangling. Yeah. Didn't Emily. one crit fail though? So it's. Yeah, one crit fail on their chokehold, and so what I'm just doing is I'm making them a little disoriented by it. So, okay. um, whether whether you would be aware enough to notice that one of them's. I am swimming for my life. They're being very disappointed. Like I can't believe I can't believe I failed that chokehold. <laughs> I practice this Sophia. all day, and then I come in this fight, and I, I can't perform. Yeah, you know, if you run, you do get plus three to your damage threshold, and you can do a, a yeah. lot more. Like you can go further. The only problem, oh, actually, no, for you, and you could because you can swim really. I suppose you could then because you have your your boatman. It does have an attack of attack of opportunity, but mm-hmm. I'm just saying you can get to the boat. Yes, and have plus three to your damage threshold, which could help you resist the attack. That is the most important thing, getting to the boat. So thank you. I will run. Okay. Using all three. So you're going to swim. So basically you just go into your Michael Phelps impression and just start going as fast as you can. Absolutely. um, You become a dolphin. With that, (laughs) times three, I think it would have been six, six yards, which would have been enough. And so you'll get right up to the rope. And I'll say you you can you can you can probably reach out and grab it, but you, you wouldn't be able to start climbing at this point. I will go ahead and take that opportunity attack with one of the sirens. Okay. And with a thirty-seven, that'll be success. Okay. And I will go ahead and roll my demolish. So that'll be thirteen points of damage. That's I regret 30. saying anything. So again, it's the second tier. So I bypass the first tier, bypass the second tier. Even with, with the plus, plus three? three? With. Yes. Dang, you're weak. Yes. I regret saying anything. So you're saying, are you saying you're moving two steps down 
the peril threshold? Or the, excuse me, the damage threshold? I is that what you're saying? I believe that's what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah, because she will weren't Josh, is that right? I was already at moderately. Now you're at grievously wounded, and you have to roll 2d6 for injury, and then 3d6 for injury? No, just a 3d6 for grievous. You don't roll for each time you go down? I don't think so. I think it's just, uh, I think it's, I think we were doing that wrong. I think if it was, if, if she was moving separately, mm. like if it if happened in multiple turns, then she would be. But if she's just all in one, if she just moves down all the way, then I think it's just, it's just a grievous. I'm pretty sure. Okay. All right. 3d6. If any of them are a six, you take a grievous in your There is a six. All right. Six. All right. Go ahead and roll a okay. d 100. Fortune points can't be used for that, right? I think fortune points can be used for any reroll, right? Um, actually, fortune points also can be a fate point. Excuse me. A fate point can yeah. be used. You can use a fate uh, point. To avoid an injury. Yeah. You, I will fine. definitely do that. Okay. Yeah. Sure. So did you have, did you did you take a negative trait at the beginning, uh, a drawback? So at the very beginning when we did character creation? I think all of us did. Yeah, we yeah, all did. Then you yeah. would have had two fate points, so you so used one you of your one. two. Yes. Okay, sure. Then we'll, we'll bypass that grievous injury. Uh, good reminder. Good teamwork. Uh, and, but you are still damage threshold, Correct. grievously wounded. Just remember that. Right. Okay. Uh, and then it'll be, so Zofia, that, that was your turn. That was the opportunity attack. Uh, and then it was, uh, it's now Emily's turn. Okay. And she's holding on to that rope, sure. right? Yeah. All right. I'm going to try and start hauling her up. Okay. Uh, so I'll, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and make an athletics check and considering her frame because you said you're fairly small right? frail you're frail um i will make this for okay i'll go ahead and make this routine and i'm going to say that since crewman number two was there ready i'm gonna say you can I'm gonna give him one of your die here he's basically okay. assisting you so i'm handing my Wonderful orange. orange. G1. I know it's my it's, precious it's orange die. I don't like to share the orange dice. Oh no! I love orange dice. Wow. So I passed on my own. I had a twelve. Okay, okay yours and was a hundred. Zero, a hundred, or twenty. Yeah. Yeah. 20. So. Okay. I was gonna say if it was a hundred, then that's an actually a crit fail. Yeah. No. No, no. 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 Okay. All right. All right. So you pass, and so you can go ahead and pull pull her up. Um, what is, so we're just going to kind of throw something together. What is your uh, brawn bonus right now? Uh, my brawn is four. Okay, we'll say you can pull her four yards up out of the water. Just pull, just, you know, with, okay. with your with your, your brawn bonus. And she's, she's four yards out, probably halfway up the actual uh, the actual wall of the ship, yeah. the outsides of the ship. Um, okay. And then it'll be Bruno's turn. Bruno, you're there. She is bleeding. She looks terrible. What do you want to do? She still has, what, five more yards? She's got yeah. about four or five more yards back. To Can I up. help pull on it? You want to go You want to go and take a pull? Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, since, since I've already had the assist go to Emily, I'll say you're going to have to just, you're just going to reach over and try to uh, just add into it. Yeah, go ahead. What was this again? What was the roll? Uh, I believe I just said athletics chest, uh, athletics test, excuse me, and because she's frail, I just made it uh, routine. So Okay. I got 50 and routines plus 10, right? Yeah. yeah. So 6% chance. And I got 36. Okay. And so what you have four. You have four. And so I would say you're able to pull her the rest of the way. And between the two of you, I kind of I kind yeah, of stiffed just, you on an action point. So between the two of you, I would say your remaining action points, you can probably just pull her back up. Yeah. Completely out of the water. The sirens, as you look down in the water, like look up and they just hiss at you. Uh, Bruno hisses back. <laughs> <laughs> You woke me up. <laughs> this is stupid. Uh, and uh, seemingly frustrated um, and seeing how many uh, there are now, they descend back into the water uh, and begin swimming away. And you wait a few beats looking around to see if this is indeed the end of the combat. And it does, does seem like with her up on the ship now that, that they've gone away at this point. I'm gonna try and help her like 
get somewhere a little where she can lean up against something and lay down since okay. I see she's wounded. Okay. And we can go ahead and break structure yeah. structure at this time and, and we'll say you, you just you pull her a little bit further away from the edge at this point. The two crewmen um, are, are still scanning. Uh, they're I've got like the last bit of the, the javelins. You see uh, uh, Maria Rembo uh, Maria Rembolt, the uh, the captain, so to speak. She starts climbing up the steps with your other allies if they're coming and like what's what's going on? What's and then crewmen are de- debriefing as best they can um I'm like oh, uh, i think it was i think it was sirens sirens and they're like sirens you haven't seen sirens in these parts in 10 years or so something in 80 years yeah yeah i know they were here the whole time no, uh so so they they seem to be scanning the edge looking for more um so what are the rest of you doing Sophia is definitely just out of breath and just kind of looking at her legs and, and just, you know, kind of like, they're, they're, they need help. There's a, there's a voice. They needed, they needed help. And uh, it was a trick. It, I didn't know what I was doing and I just had to go. Uh, Erin, why don't you go ahead and roll a folklore test for me and you can make this trivial for you. Uh, I rolled a, a nine. nine. Yeah, I needed uh, with trivial. Yeah, that's. Six I would six. say you you would know. I mean, uh, you've probably heard being a buccaneer, a man of the seas yourselves. You've probably heard these stories before, and it's not uncommon for for siren. I mean, that's what they do. They lure people in with the sound of their voice. They try to trick them for a variety of different ways. Sometimes it's just damsel in distress. Sometimes it's more kind of the allure, uh, like the arousal of it all. In this case, they tried to lure her with some sort of, uh, you know, some sort of helpless victim that needed, that needed assistance. Unfortunately, it was a siren, and you were just lured away. Do you happen to hear it? Um, you spoke with the pilgrims, right, Emma? Yes, I did. Do you know if any of them are perhaps a doctor? She's very injured, and I'm not. I'm not sure, but let me go find them and ask. So you go down into the hold and you seek out the pilgrims. Um, there's the man you know as Carl Stuber, um, okay. who is, again, with his daughter at this point. Some of the other people seem to be concerned. Um, and the the father of, of Carl Stuber, the older man, this old, I'm, I've uh, been known to stitch up a wound or two. Um, to, who, who's injured? Who, who's injured? Yeah. It's my friend, Sophia. Can you come up deck and help? Yeah, of course, of course. And he pulls up his pants and uh, he starts coming with you. Um, he's like, uh... Who was his pants? Uh, on the ground. He was sleeping. He was sleeping. He was oh. getting up. You know, you know I, what I meant is like he hikes them up a little further. That's yeah. all. Like he was like, oh, here we go. Uh, and and he, he comes up, he takes a look at Sophia. Like, oh, my goodness. Um, supplies. Um, I, I offer him tincture and uh, I have laudanum tincture and okay. bandages. Okay, so you can give her laudanum, which will shoot her one step back up if you want, which makes it, which moves her from grievous then to serious. And then he can attempt a bandage check because uh, I don't, or a heal check, excuse me, because I don't believe. Uh, Zofia has had anything recently because you can do it once a day, and that might be able to get her up to moderately at that point. Uh, is, is this what you want to do? Uh, it's yes. your choice, Sophia. Do you oh, want to yes. take drugs? You take corruption if you do so. Yes. Uh, okay, so you you take it. You move. You, so you're going to move up the track to Sirius, and then he's going to nestle in like next to you. Like, oh, uh, as he reaches back to his back, I don't quite have my sea legs and. Uh, let me take a look here. Um, just lantern light. Anybody? Uh, my eyes oh, on. I'll get they? out. I'll get out my lantern. Uh, okay. So you hold the lantern over top, and he's just, oh dear, oh this is a savage. Oh goodness. Do we have uh, to chop it off, doctor? Well, it's her hip, so that's I an awkward. Uh, no. Oh, no, okay. Thank, thank you. Um, oh, uh, no, I think we can. I think we. Doesn't look to be too terribly. I think you can come back from this. It's just, don't go. Um, you Sophia's might... trying really hard to act tough, so, but this really hurts. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're, you're going to be just fine. You're going to be just fine, dearie. Uh, an old man like myself might have suffered a far worse a fate, but a young, strapping lass like you. It's getting kind of creepy. Uh, any rolls? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a succeed. Uh, so, 
uh, you can move up to moderately wounded. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I, uh, I don't even know who you are, but thank oh, you. Uh, did you uh, Henry, just, just call me Henry. Um, it's, it's a pleasure. Um, I, I believe I... These are the pilgrims that I met. They're such wonderful people. Yes, um, we are very wonderful people. Um, thank you, Henry. I, I, I think you're overusing the term pilgrim, just people. But no, it's, 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 it's certainly fine. <laughs> I apologize. No, no. Do I have top hats? Big buckles on him? Well, right now he doesn't. He just, his hair is all disheveled. It's like, he's got bed head. He's got one side of his head's all matted down. Um, he's, a, he's a kindly looking old man. He actually looks very nice. He looks very grandfatherly. Um, he's like... Um, um, dearie, and he looks over at Emily. Could you, um, could you help me bring this? Um, what was your name again, young lady? Sophia. Um, could you help me bring your friend below? We will make sure she's uh, she's tended to. Of course, needs of course. to get some rest and ensure there's no infection or anything in the wound. I hear that green elf disease is <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's contagious. It's really getting around these parts. On the way out. Sophia says to Irwin, I heard your stories about these, but I always thought I would be stronger and I wouldn't fall under their spell. But I guess, I guess not. I guess you don't know until it happens. It's, I don't think it's a matter of being stronger. I think it's a matter of that they appeal to the particular group of people or they think whatever strategy would work best since you want to help people, you are more open to wanting to go help someone. Should have just slept under the deck. Oh well, maybe next time. It's uh, my preferred place. <laughs> we should definitely go. I mean, it might rain or something. You know, and not one for outdoors. And you, you know, uh, I think the laudanum is kicking in, so yeah, she's feeling so a little less pain. Scoop you up, and so he. Uh, so yeah, between you two, like I would say, Emily can very easily. And yeah. pick you up, carry you down. And he's moving along, kind of telling you stories along the way, like, "Oh yes, when I was a young man, I took a, a terrible cudgel to the to the temple and spent oh three days thinking I was a raccoon. It was it was quite quite oh, terrible. Goodness. Yes, yes. So it's all manner of terrible injury. You never know what can happen, but to survive such a vicious attack from these, these deep sea dwelling creatures, it's going to be a wonderful story. I should be able to tell and. Certainly, the um, the uh, the scars you'll have will be very rich, very um, tale worthy. Um, yes, and then the woman, uh, his wife, like, don't mind him; he's a bit awkward. Um, come, come, sit. And so she, like, this older, old elderly couple, just is is making sure that you have everything you need. They have, like, a little cushy, like, they, they wrap, like, this blanket down. It's like a pillow for you. And she's like, right here. And she, like, sets your head, like, right in her lap. And she starts, here you go, here you go. And gives you some little bit little, little stuff to drink. A little bit of, you're not sure what it is, but it tastes it tastes kind of fruity, a little bitter. Um, she's like, just drink away. You'll be fine in the morning. So during this interaction, Zofia actually gets sort of stiffens a little bit. Mm -hmm. And while this might have seemed like something that would be comforting, mm -hmm. Zofia's kind of physically reacting like this is very uncomfortable for her. Oh, Victoria, I think she's going into shock. No, I don't. Just, just, why don't you just back off a bit? You're, you're coming on a bit strong, Henry. Um, can you just go find some fresh water or something? So, Zofia... Under the effects of the laudanum, this will kind of come and go. Um, mm -hmm. But anyone around would have noticed that um, this was not as welcome as it might have appeared. Okay. So the woman's like, it's okay, sweetheart. It's just fine if you, you know, all, all. She picks up your head and, like, puts it back down, like, off of her. And I can, didn't mean to impose. It's just wanted to make sure you're all right. And... Mm -hmm. And she looks over at Emily. Um, maybe you want to just sit with her and yeah, until I'll, she falls asleep. I'll come sit next to her. I'll be right here in case you need anything. And she just settles in. Uh, again, it's any, anything you need. Yeah, thank you so much, Margaret. Margaret, yes, yes. I noticed that interaction of her getting pampered. I'm like, oh, Margaret, I think the sirens got me. <laughs> uh, oh, come 
Come here, dear dear boy. Come here. And I lay in her lap. What is happening? Is it, what? <laughs> but what? I don't see an injury. It's the inside. It's internal. It's it internal. It's in his um, brain. Henry, can you can you examine this boy? And says he's got an internal injury, and he comes over, takes the lady. Oh, okay, um, let's take a look here. Yeah, um, yes. Uh, Kind of lifts up your shirt a little bit, starts poking your ribs. Ooh. Oh, it could be um, broken rib, perhaps. Um, yes, um, probably going to need oh, um, probably going to need surgery for sure. No, I'm definitely no, going to need to cut him open. No, no, we don't uh, need that. I believe I've got comes my down. surgeon what? tools. Cut something open? Yes, yes. I believe we're going to have to cut your friend open. We don't know. Here. Yes. We don't need that. I feel better already. No, I'm going to need to, to yes, get, get right in there. Make sure all the organs are all, all tip-top, good shape, you know. You know. Don't want anything festering. Internal injuries can just lead to death so quickly. Yes. No, I feel fine now, really. Oh, it's interesting. It's interesting. Um, must have been something else, I suppose. Yeah, yeah maybe. maybe. just constipation. Yes. I think, I think he just hit his head, really. Oh, titty. Um, and so he grabs you by the head and looks down, starts running his hand through your hair. Yes, there's all sorts of lumps up here. Oh, goodness. Oh, that's three or four. Um, yes. You know, I've had a friend back in Austin that um, used to crack heads open for a living. Yes, yes. Um, full science, he said. Yes. Wonderful. Uh, don't worry, I think you'll be okay. I think it's fine. I think you just have a misshapen skull, is what it looks like. Yeah. yeah. Oh, thanks, Doc. Yes. Uh, <laughs> well, this has been a great bit of fun, but um, I am very old, and so is Margaret. I am not as old as you. Um, I think we should perhaps settle in for the evening, and um, but we're right here. We're glad to help as, as best we can. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay, so... Is anyone looking to do anything, or else are you guys going to go back to, to bed? Is you're, there's, there's stuff going. You, you definitely hear voices back up on deck. Those of you who came down last, certain or, or when I don't think you ever actually came down. I'm just kind of st- up there too. I'm okay. just kind of staring out at the ocean. Okay. Just thinking to okay. myself about everything that's been going on and how things seem to be getting a little uh, worse. As it's the it's further peculiar, we, right? It's the further we adventure into trying to help the worst things are getting for us it's been an odd odd run so far i mean it's if you think about it it's just you're you're going to a far off place to try to help a man simply because you all lost your jobs and he he's he offered you one in the time of need but along the way you've seen you've had some strange experience along the thorn coast you saw a, a child nearly drowned and presumably another drowned and you saw a woman pinned beneath a cart and several other people that were attacked and partially eaten by these mountain cats and this creepy woman took some sort of liking to your your friend over here and and now another one of your friends after spending some strange moments inside of a of a lighthouse with all sorts of odd masks and his strange voice now this this friend of yours this young gnome is attacked by by siren so yeah and you've heard from other people too like they, they keep calling it a you know this is a bad place like where you're going it's just it's the end of the world you know it's the edge of the world stuff like that so um, do you regret at all like your your decision to agree to come on this journey i'm not sure yet if Perhaps things will get better. Try and mm-hmm. be optimistic, but I'm not really sure if this was the right decision. Okay. Yeah. Bruno, come up to him. All right. <clears throat> and ask him, uh, what you thinking about, buddy? It's a nice looking <laughs> ocean right there. <laughs> oh, God. It's been a while since I've been in the ocean, which was never. So, uh, yeah, this is exciting. Uh, if you call... Uh, one of our friends almost dying exciting sure uh i would prefer uh people to not almost die for basically no reason so far as would i i would agree with that statement uh when i meant sighting i meant not not sighting 
I would say it's a double negative. By I, w- I, w- I would say it's it's fairly terrifying that in the span of like ten minutes, we she almost died, and things keep happening to us that are not at all okay. I'm a little concerned about considering that everyone keeps saying this place is terrible and we're not even there yet and all these terrible things keep happening to us what's going to happen well maybe the way there is terrible but the you know the actual place maybe it's pleasant uh, don't judge a place we, we until can, you spend we can a week there. only hope that that's the case at this point okay. i guess want to make sure everyone's okay i mean i did set us on this mission i am team leader captain of this squad as some would say would Erwin say that? Would Erwin think of it that way? As some would say. Uh, I know, that's one that... if, if you feel that way, you are welcome to feel that way. Um, I'm not really sure uh, if things will get better, but I will be hopeful. I'll just, for the next, like, 15 minutes or so, just stare out, look at the sky, look at the ocean, and ponder life to myself. So just to clarify, you guys, you guys did get... A chest at the very beginning, you got some funds. Like yeah. he, he, he advanced you some funds, and upon the, it's one of the reasons you were able to afford some of the things you were like a cart and order. Mm-hmm. We get, get those; those were lended to you as well. And so there's there's the promise, perhaps, of of payment in the end. And reputation was that he is a he was a well to do man. But at the same time, when you all went to Harold Zeiger's house, like he was he was he looked possibly destitute at the same time because yeah. no furniture is as if he sold everything so well, we did hear the the rumor about mm-hmm. how he had to pay money to keep them from getting yeah executed uh something 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 terrible could have yeah. befallen them and this it seems like their exile their their exile to this labor colony was was the better choice yeah. and the, it, the rumor was like larceny or something uh, to the capitol building yeah, Richmond was. Rich, you got this information, I believe, from Richmond, who said that they were part of a group, some sort of organization that tried to attack the like it's called the Hall of Dynastic Records, which is the equivalent of you know like the Capitol Building or something for the U.S. You know, something where government officials, um, you know, monarchy, high-level monarchy officials are at. They made some sort of attack. Whether they were specifically part of that attack, you don't know, but they were yeah. part of the organization, um, and somehow they got off somewhat leniently, you would think. Um, so there is the hope of perhaps there being some reward at the end. Hopefully it'll be worth it. Yeah. Hey, as long as we don't die, we get paid a little bit. It's always a new experience, man. You gotta think of the positive. Don't look back to the negatives. And then Bruno's gonna sit there awkwardly next to him for the next 15 minutes. He's staring out there and just be like, Tapping his fingers okay. on the uh, on the uh, railing. Okay, okay. Uh, so after a little while, Marie is going to come over to you all, and she's going to say, um, "I'm sorry to interrupt, but considering what's happened tonight, I think it might be best if all passengers were to go on the deck um, for the rest of the evening, because it's like." It's in the middle of the night. Like the sun's not out, moon's moon's out, etc. So, um, if you take a moment or two more, just just retire down there, please. Aye, aye, Captain. I'll take a moment to just kind of think to some something somewhere, perhaps maybe if you could help us to be safe, because this is been a trying couple of days and it is not easy you see in a prayer yeah do you have a, a deity in mind that you not at the moment just okay. kind of a general praying okay. to whatever possibly force could like help it. with this All right. and then after that i'll go inside and All right. go to bed okay because i mean there are people in the hold who probably have some pamphlets they can give you <laughs> um, <laughs> they're nice people they are they are very nice uh, okay, so the rest of the night passes, unless there's something specific anybody is looking to do. When morning comes, um, you all awake. Uh, I will say that, considering the evening uh, what went down, I would say everyone would at best would go to get to imperiled on your peril on your peril uh, track if you if you 
if any of you took peril. Um, but morning comes, there doesn't seem to be any other issues throughout the evening. Uh, but when Sophia, when you awake, you see that you're flanked on either side by these two old folks and by, uh, no, I'm right. by Emily right is there. right there. She's like right up on you. <laughs> no, I'm like keeping I'm... like the, some distance from them. Good morning. She's the, the old lady says, and she's already got like, like food for you. Like, hey, you, you need to eat, keep up your strength. And hey. so it's just, just basic bread. It looks like nothing, nothing too great. Thank you. Thank right, you. Well, my pleasure. It's, it's been my pleasure, indeed. Um, what are everybody doing this morning? Um, Emily's gonna just kind of ask Sophia, just like, how are you feeling? Not great. That uh, that definitely hurts, and it's kind of embarrassing. Yeah. It's not my first time on a boat. I've heard of sirens before. I mean, you never. Back when, you know, I was part of Enlisted, uh, you know, you never really know how you're going to handle, like, a dangerous situation until you get there. It's really, it's really hit or miss. You either fight, freeze, or flight. And thankfully, usually I'm a fighter, but there's been a few times where I froze and it's really embarrassing. So I know how you feel. Well, then there's a whole boat full of people that I don't know and oh, don't probably mind all think I'm weak and no I'm, you fought a siren there's no way that they think you're weak two sirens excuse me well so, I, I don't know that I fought two sirens I swam away from two sirens and got like really hurt in the process you survived so you know I, that's really admirable I really Sophia. thought for a minute there that I wasn't when I realized that there was a second one I, it was I really terrifying. I was, a I was I was so scared for you. So I'm I'm glad you're okay. I am too. But now I just want to like hide in a corner. Somewhere. I really want to be on land. <laughs> it would so. be it would be good. Yeah. I'm gonna go over to her and I'm going to uh, I apologize for uh, not being more help. I was very ineffective in trying to stave off or injure the sirens to protect you uh, it was very it's been a while since i've been that uh, incompetent at what i'm fairly good at and uh, it's, i'm sorry well you tried and you didn't hit me because that would have been bad so i mean as long as you didn't hit me and makes things worse it's okay i'm Thank glad you for i helping. hit one that was satisfying you sure. did yes I, I was i was so focused on swimming i didn't really see what happened I threw a javelin. I've never thrown one before. Ooh. So that was, that was really nice. And did you hit it? Yes. And did it hurt? Did it look oh, like it, it hurt? Oh, it bled a lot, so. Good job. Yeah. Thank you. I was just going to ask if Jovi and Bear also uh, feel the need to oh, apologize yes. for No. Uh, hey, Bear, we should go check up on Zofia. Everything happened so fast, we don't know what happened. Yeah, so we'll go up there and see them all grouped up. Mm -hmm. uh, Bear's going to come up keep hearing all this stuff about a siren what is that like a like a big fish you get hurt by a fish what, what? it's Sophia just sort of hangs her head down even lower that like more people are coming mm -hmm. and talking about the old lady looks at at, at bear and she's like oh my goodness you're a big one so muscular oh. Hello, my lady. I, I feel like you probably have to kind of hunch a little bit, like sometimes as you as you oh, in the hold. Yeah, in the hold, a little bit, not too bad. Like just kind of like sink your neck a little bit. Not so much because you're hitting it, just because it's kind of close and you're maybe a little afraid. Yeah. But oh my, she's just kind of enamoring how large you are as a man. Quite That's large. It. So when I, I woke up and I heard a cry for help over the edge, and I. No one else heard it, but I just felt like I had to go find whoever this person was who was crying for help. Oh, I heard it too. I probably would have done the same thing, so I don't and blame I you help. for getting hurt. No one else jumped in, right? It was just me? Yes. Okay, good. If I, um, if I had been up on top of the dick up, surely, and you see this, the old man just like eating like oatmeal or something. It's just like <laughs> dripping from his... Porridge. Yeah, it's just coming right down... <laughs> Right down his lips, uh, I'm surely, if I was a younger man, of course. Yeah. Um, all right, is there anything you guys are looking to get done today? You still have about a day's worth of travel or so. They said around two to two and a half days or so between, depending on depending on conditions. Um, 
Why don't we, uh, we could go ask the captain and see if she's encountered anything. Uh, okay, so she's up on deck uh, this time a day. So when you kind of start looking around for her, is, is anyone going, who's going up for this? Who's going to, to talk to her? Anybody in particular? I'll go with Emily sure. if she's going. Bruno, yeah. Emily, Bear. Okay. Um, Sophia's still more about a siren. Sure. I'm yeah. just gonna, I'm gonna sit yeah. with Emily. I'm gonna sit okay. with uh, Sophia. Okay. Yeah. The, the the doctor definitely recommends. Um, I I would encourage you to um. Yeah, to rest please stay. Please stay. As best you can. I mean, um, I periodically I'm checking in on the other one over there, and he points over and you see Christina, uh, the, the elvish woman, still flanked by wardens. As Bruno goes up the stairs, she. It's a sly little wave of her fingers. Bruno's an awkward, like, and then, sorry, awkward, like, you know, wave back and yeah. just jumps back up to the top. Okay. Is there more prisoners with her? Or no, she's, she's the only one. She's the only one. She's, she's the only one, one. She's she's one to survive, remember? I don't know if there's, like, more that came in on a separate little... No, it was supposed to be two, uh, and then the, there's two, there were supposed to be two wagons as part of the train, and both of them crashed, and only one person survived between the two. Paula Abdul, man. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, I know. Who knows? Well, that, well, there were the the other two prisoners that survived. Well, yeah, technically they survived, but they're not here. They're not here. Yeah. Yes, and they're you off know. competing in the Olympics somewhere. Yep. Okay. Um, before we go and talk to the captain, <laughs> okay, whose name I definitely remember, Marie, um, Maria, Marie. Um, I'm gonna say to Emily, Emily. Hey, so uh, you know that Casita kind of likes me more than you guys. She's always waving to me and looking at me all weird. Yeah, I don't really like it. Do you like it? Eh. What, what kind of answer is that? I like the attention. I mean, we give you attention. Is that not enough for you? Not the way she gives me attention. Okay. <laughs> like everyone just collectively uh, <laughs> roll their eyes or cover their faces. Oh my God. Emily just kind of like it's yeah, like, okay, I thought we were best friends, but all right. And then she well, just kind of keeps walking up the steps and to go find Marie. Yeah, what's that connection you guys share that she keeps talking about? You guys are, like, related? No, you're not an elf. You're... I check my ears. <laughs> you are... I don't know, a tiny bit of a tippage. Emily oh, turns geez. around and she goes, he's hit his head a few times. Okay. Bruno. I don't have green elf disease, if that's what you're asking. Oh, God. Oh, okay. That's going to be a running thing now. <laughs> that's, that's good. <laughs> okay. uh, my mind immediately went there. I'm like, uh-oh. All right. She, what, she keeps talking to you about a lady. Yeah, I don't know who it is. Just, you should you should really be careful with any, like, other ladies that you meet. I don't want you to get, like, syphilis or something. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> All right. So you guys hunt down the captain on deck. Um, she seems to be a bit, a bit busy, but she does take a moment uh, to speak with you. Was tonight an anomaly, or has something like that happened before? Well, there are a number of different kinds of potential dangers whenever you come up into the sea, um, but. Uh, I don't think I've seen sirens for some time, but my, my mother um, might know more. But um, she's been she's been sailing these waters longer than I have. But um, but now this was this was a first for me. Unfortunately, we did take a slightly different route just to be be safe. But had some strange tides last night. Um, but I can't say. I'm. I'm very. Uh, I'm very sorry. I'm, I'm thankful that your friend is. That your friend is okay. You, you acted quite quickly and bravely. As did George. George. Yes. Yes. That one over there. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, you all did. Wonderful. Um, but. Uh, I wish I, I could have seen it. I still don't know what a siren looks like. Yeah, you don't want to see it. That's pretty terrible. A okay. fish. Imagine Thing. if there was a woman. For the top half. And the bottom half was like a fish. Very much like that. Oh. Yes. But razor fins and... Razor teeth. Yes. 
So do they have like a nest around here somewhere? Or how do they... Well, they, they tend just... to congregate in groups far beneath the waters somewhere. I might have a cove, perhaps. I'd rather not go investigate. They are not friendly creatures, and they tend to be in some groups. Um, they, as far as I understand it, they feed off us. And oh. Yes, they are. I doubt they're following us, though. We've put a, several, quite a distance between us and where we were, so hopefully we've we've managed to outrun them, so to speak. What's the best way to avoid another mishap like that? I suppose um, don't don't sleep on deck or something, uh, probably. Um, I, I feel very, very bad. They should have been keeping a better watch, although they were quick to respond. Um, I don't, if they were... If they were keeping a much better watch, perhaps your friend wouldn't have jumped into the water to begin with. But it's neither here nor there. The uh, past is past, and everyone is okay, and uh, that's what matters. We won't be on the water much longer. Um, hopefully, if the tide, or excuse me, if the winds uh, keep as favorably as they do, uh, we'll make it, make it relatively soon, sometime hopefully before the end of the day, maybe with even some light left. If not, we'll have to find the coast and anchor down for a bit more again. Fair enough. Well, if you need anything done, just let me know. My hands are itching to do something. It's not a whole lot to do on the uh, water. Fortunately, um, you are a passenger. We don't require any specific duty for you. Just keep your animal in check and make sure your friend is okay, and that is all. Thank you for your time. Of course, of course. And she gets back to work. Um, okay, so I go meet it back up with the rest of the group and just... Okay. At this point, um, Chill. the old old man Henry is regaling Sophia with a story of... Uh, back when I was um, just a young medic in, in the Grand Monarch's army, uh, we went on this wonderful excursion out into the Grand... Um, I believe you've heard of it, called the Evermores, and I must have saved... 10, 12 people one afternoon just shifted from one injured lad to one injured lass after the other. And, uh, it was really? quite remarkable, quite remarkable. Wow. Yes. Um, yeah. Meanwhile, his wife is just kind of rolling his eyes and just her eyes and just kind of nodding. Like she's heard this story a thousand times. Like, yep, here we go sure. again. Sure. Sure. Danny. New audience. Yes, of course. Um, okay, so um, you're you're trapped in a boat. You don't have there's not a whole lot to do. Uh, if there's something you would like to do, chime up. We can fast forward if we want, but otherwise, uh, if there's something you're looking to do. Sophia will try to find an opportunity when uh, maybe he's gone to get a drink or get something to eat or whatever. Now that her mind's a little more clear, okay. she'll kind of gather everyone around and say, "So, before everything happened last night." I was doing what I always do when I'm on a new vessel, and I just pace around and, you know, get a, a sense for the seaworthiness of the vessel and, and what's aboard. And I noticed that the dimensions were off. That How can you even notice that? I. <laughs> Erwin would know when You're you've so been nosy. on so many ships. I, I am. I am. First, me and Cressida, super jealous between us, and now the boat. So what's wrong with the boat? Looks like a boat to me. No, it's definitely it, it, it's a good boat. It will it should definitely get us there. No, no, no problems. But there seems to be a hidden compartment. <gasps> Sometimes uh, it's good oh. to pay attention to your surroundings in case something might happen. Like I don't know, the boat has uh, shoddy patching or something, and we might need to pay attention to that. And they might not mention it. I don't know. And I would always want to know that. Yes, I understand. But yes, there seems to be a... Where is it? I point in the direction of where the hidden compartment seems to be. It's right behind you. No, okay, so you point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. and I, I wonder you... if this is similar to what we ran across much earlier. Well, last time I opened a hidden <laughs> compartment, a dead body came out of it. Yes, there's quite a few people here, so it doesn't seem to be something that we could just go investigate right this minute, but we may be able to... And this Find should make a, a diversion. 
I don't mean distraction. No, I, diversion actually would have worked too. I was really surprised. I was like, yeah. wow, he got the word right. I don't particularly remember, but I did kind of interrupt a conversation between two people talking about something uh, back on the... Uh, you did? Uh, you interrupted the, an argument. An argument. Yeah, okay. there was an argument that was going on um, Yeah, between the, the daughter, Marie, and her mother, if I recall correctly. No, there no, was, was another the, instance which where the shopkeeper. She was talking to the shopkeeper. Oh yeah, that one. I'm yeah. sorry, that one too. Yeah, you were just interrupting conversations everywhere. Yes, yeah. you did remember that. I don't. I don't yeah. remember what that was about. You didn't really get a whole lot. Yeah. She, she was asking if Alaric had come to town or not. Yeah. And he was the guy who had the crates. The crates. Of guns. The, the guns. crates. That's good memory over here, right? Emily. Look at this stuff. It's good. I like it. Your notes aren't even out right now. <laughs> I know because I've listened to the. Uh, old episodes okay. 12 times. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> okay. All right. Started to speaking. sneak one past you guys now. All right. <laughs> All right. So I guess uh, we should maybe investigate and see if we're kind of involved in some kind of, I don't know, like we're just passengers, but what if they're doing something that's not right, though, you know, the wardens might need to know. Well, and, and the captain said that the sirens don't come by very often and who knows these things could be connected could not be connected do you think they have like siren treats in there (laughs) you you never you never know and maybe the the crates with the weapons could be related could not be related but if we get a moment we should try to try to check it out erwin you only want to investigate because you want one of those guns at this point i don't even know if i'd use it properly with how i performed last night your I performance af- was fine. I would be afraid to use it and it would explode in my hand. I think I would rather get hit with a bow than with a gun. Get hit with arrows, you know. Crossbow bow. No, 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 no. They throw the, the bow. bow. <laughs> yeah. Throw the bow. Yeah, there we go. And use the arrow as a, okay. as a dagger. All right. Are you guys actually going to go try and, and look into this, or is this just you Maybe guys? Maybe when nightfall hits, when people are snooping. Oh. We might get there before nightfall. Oh. Depends on wins. I got to do a roll. Let's we'll see. What's going to happen if they catch us? Will they throw us overboard? He throws Zofia overboard again, so that way he distracts the boat. I mean, if... I'm joking, Zofia. Realistically, if we piss them off, this is really the only boat to get back. Yeah, we definitely shouldn't do it then. Yeah, probably not. Uh, I don't want to get stranded on an island. Yeah. yeah I, with how terrible we've heard the stories and how bad things have been going, we should mind our own business. Well, no, not this islands. Well, not going to an island. You're going to, so to take the long way back. You're going to a you're going to an un, a largely uncharted territory. Like there's parts of it, like on this isthmus that you've that they've established a colony and some other things. But yeah, there's a whole like northward. No one knows. Yeah, I mean, with an area that has been charted, that is there's a small is... yeah there's a small chunk of land that has has been has been explored, but the vast majority of the ruin is unexplored. Chovy, you're you're small. Has anyone really been paying attention? Of course, I don't think people even know I'm here. <laughs> yeah, can't you have? Gretel Are you making like meta it? jokes because you haven't done anything in this episode? Can we have Gretel go find it? Is she that good? Or he? Or it's she? But yeah, she can snoop around. But I bet you she could probably can't tell me what she found. Oh, you, you, oh, I thought you could speak to the thing. Yeah, you're not a. I can speak to her, yeah, but I can, she can't speak to me. I don't understand oh, what she's saying. Oh, so it's not two way. Okay, I got you. I got you. No. But maybe you could sneak over in the corner, and I bet no one would even notice if you were. Hey, over I was there. thinking that myself. I mean, if you start taking your clothes off, I'm sure nobody will look over. Wait, what? What just happened? Are we going back Wait. to the prostitution thing? <laughs> no, I, oh, I mean, like if got he does mic, like his normal mic. thing. <laughs> All right. So, do you? How much space do we have down here? I mean, the hold is filled right now. Just remember that it's a it's kind of a channel in the mm-hmm. middle, and that's where the wagons are set up. And then there's on either side, like so those are kind of recessed down, and so there's all sorts of rows of wagons and farm animals, and then the wagons where Cresita is. There's the wardens, and then on either side of that channel is where people are sitting on benches, and that's where they're sleeping. Like, they're sleeping on these benches or they're sleeping on the ground. So... All right, I have an idea, Jovi. Yeah. Me, as in um, Bruno, and uh, Bear. Bear, thank My you. Goodness. Thank you. Bear, we were like stand in the way because we're like the two biggest. Yeah, yeah. And then like 
you know, you like you just be hidden between us. Like no one's gonna look between our legs because that's weird. So they're gonna look, you know, like at us, and then you just do stuff behind us. We just be like casually, just like talking, you know, next to each other, blocking the view. I'm gonna go up to the, the deck. Okay. All right, Sophia, just tell me where it is. I'll see if I can find something. Sophia points right to where it is. Okay. So looking over in that direction, um, you see that that's where some of the uh, the pilgrim folk, not any of the ones that you've spoken with before, that they seem to have been somewhat bunking out. There's there's room to perhaps like set up distraction or converse and, and keep them to the side. Um, but it doesn't look like it's within a clear sight of the wardens, at least. Um, but certainly the pilgrims might be able to see this grouping of Sunbearer followers. Emily, you can go back to them and say you want to convert. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, maybe, maybe. Um, Emily kind of ca- calls out to Carl and she's like, hey, Carl, um, would you guys mind um, maybe leading us through a prayer that will help maybe speed up Sophia's healing? His eyes light up. Oh. I would be on it, of course. I'll use this I, chance to start sneaking around, maybe like through crates, animals, bodies, however. Okay. I'll try to like rotate around so I'm in between the pilgrims and him. So okay. if I have to like use my fatness, I'll use it to block the vision. Okay. Uh, Bear, is there anything you're doing to try to help with this? Uh, yeah, Enjoy just, me, buddy. Yeah, just body block for him. Just, okay. Some, just kind of go wander over and just lean against the wall. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> Awkward like hand on it. It's like, oh, I don't know to put like, oh, it. Geez, I can't believe we're doing this. <laughs> okay. So I'll have, uh, okay, I want a couple of rolls here. Emily, I think you're fine. You don't have to do anything. You asked a simple question. He's coming over to where you and Sophia are, and he is going through a very, uh, very famous, I don't know it off the top of my head, prayer. Uh, <laughs> so he's like, you know, this is the dark time, and we are going to a dark place, and there's no one better and the sun bear to bring light to exactly such that's a, exactly what we need right now uh, such a downtrodden place and uh, i was i was certainly uh, broken hearted to hear about um zofia it was was it yes. um, so terribly sorry I'm, I'm quite pleased though that my father and mother were able to take good care of you and uh, they are such wonderful people they are and they're a little bit much at times of course but I'm so thankful Yes, but um, but yes. Uh, so um, it might be better, of course, if we were to do this prayer on deck. However, it's much easier for the for the, uh, the sun bearer to hear our our words when we're able to very much see the sun. That is kind of rule number one. In our it's religion. true. Would your family like to come up and pray pray with us? Oh, um, mother and farm. I suppose pose Sh- sure um my mother always said the more the merrier uh, mother father um victoria could you grab jasmina and, um uh, we're going to go up to the deck and have our morning prayer uh and so yeah they but remember not the entire group is his family it's just that's yeah. his family so we'll say roughly two-fifths of them almost half of them leave but some still remain yeah. but that definitely definitely helped for sure and so you all go up you're limping kind of up the way i'm like oh. helping her up. yeah um okay so i'll have i'll have so like animals up there too with all the there are some animals here. around here yeah i can like get one over by us too to help do some blocking okay all right so I like one here. I like this. Uh, okay, so Bear, why don't you give me an animal handling check? We'll just yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll make it. it you're, all you're really trying to do is just get their attention. You're not trying to do anything special. So just make it routine. Uh, don't roll just yet. Yeah, I'm going to give everybody something to roll here. Or not everybody. And then I'll give um, like Bruno. Bruno, you're kind of just trying to block, right? Just give me a. But make it look natural. Sure. Give me a, give me a routine skullduggery test, which okay. is a special skill. Oh, and I'll pull out my um. My little notepad that I've been writing my okay diary stuff in. Okay, so you're just trying to just trying to act cool, you know, just trying to act cool. Uh, and then, and then Chovy, I'm going to need you to roll a stealth check, and um, that one's going to be secret. So just roll it like it's standard. Okay. And I will. I will. Was it mine? Anything special? Yours is skull diary. It's a special skill. Yeah, so remember that. Flip the fail if is you don't have a skill point. Routine or anything or. Uh, yeah, major is routine. 
Okay, simple I enough. So it's thirty-seven animal, but you go first. I do have a point, so. Okay, so it animal works. handling check first. Oh, I crushed it. I needed a fifty-one, but I rolled a two. Okay, so as you're standing around by uh, the remainders of the pilgrims who are all sitting there, uh, deep in study, some of them conversing, others just looks to be uh, playing some kind of game, not not gambling, but some other kind of game. Um, the uh, you just call over one of their 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 little goats comes just coming up it's pretty good actually that's pretty good uh comes comes up and uh and you're just just petting it and and one of the one of the other children uh not not any of them that you've met before uh comes over and joins you and starts petting it too and she's got this big bright face like she's so happy to be petting this goat and a couple other starts coming over yeah so so you managed to distract a couple more, and so Mr. Uh, Mr. Bruno, go ahead. All right, I got thirty-seven. Flip to fail. I fail. Okay. Flip so thirty-six. So as you're sitting there writing, and this, you know, you didn't you didn't crit fail, right? No. Nope, you're welcome to use one of those fortune points if you like. That are way away from you at this point. Good. You want to let it, let it ride? Okay, so as you're sitting there leaning, um, writing, this uh, haughty middle-aged woman looks over at you and she's just like, can we help you, sir? Yeah, I was just um, documenting my day, my my plans for the, for the day. How <laughs> wonderful for you. Um, but we were having a private conversation so if you could perhaps document your day elsewhere, we would be most grateful. If you insist. Unless you need help in this conversation? I believe we are suited quite well to the task at hand. If you say so. Yes. I will move two feet back. Okay. All right. <laughs> so now go ahead and roll that stealth here. So basically what I'm doing is based upon... Uh, what they have been able to do uh, between Sophia and, and Emily luring some of them up to deck uh, with the distraction that Bear provided with the animals and then also with the failure of Bruno to distract a few others that's going to affect perhaps the the okay. difficulty but uh, you roll it as a routine. Yeah I just got 12. Oh 12. routine. You roll, it, you roll it as routine but because it's a secret test you so a secret test remember you don't know the actual difficulty of it. Because you're just stealthing, trying to not be seen right now. So everybody else is, is essentially has an aware. Oh, so I just give you my number. Yeah, just give 12. Me okay. All right. So as you, as you watch this group of people surround this goat in this disturbing display of primal joy as they pet this goat, <laughs> you take the opportunity to hop down into the that trench where all the wagons and you climb underneath one and underneath another climb underneath one of them looks like an oxen or so and you hop out on the other side and while you can hear that bruno is being talked down to by a woman you quickly look in this corner that you were pointed to by sophia now all she did was point you to a corner. She didn't necessarily, she never herself found any sort of secret panel. So I'm going to have you go ahead and make a scrutinized test. And it's going to be challenging. All right, I need a 37. Okay. Go. 81, but I'm going to go ahead and use one of these. Okay, yeah. Fifty-one. I'm going to use one of these. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Is this going to be like a closer. trend? Of- Let's get closer. I like taking it all. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, wow. Hey, 20. Okay. So, that's a two, buddy. That's a two. That's, that's a two, two, actually. That's, that's, <laughs> right. that's even better than you thought. Yeah. Uh, so as you look at the different paneling of the wood, you notice that there seems to be some kind of chafing around one of the pieces of wood. Um, this one of this trench. And you notice that likely it's because something has been pulled off or pulled on. And so you manage to run your fingernails underneath and wedged in between and with a little pull and then a slide you notice what looks to be some kind of smuggler's compartment now rather than open it the entire way which would be quite obvious to Mm -hmm. anybody standing around 
because you're very good at getting into tight places, uh-huh. <laughs> you keep it open just, just ever so slightly, squeeze inside, and close it behind you. Now, you're in a dark hole, can't see, there's no light in here. I start feeling around. You start feeling around, and it's tight quarters, and you're bumping into things, you're feeling lumps, you're feeling a tarp maybe, some rope possibly, barrels or crates, can't quite figure it out, stub a toe here or there. Um, go ahead, if you would please, and just make a make an easy, make an easy uh, resolve test for a little bit of stress here. It's trying to keep quiet so carefully as you're bumping into these things in the dark. All right, that'll be an 85. Wait, it's plus 20. It's plus 75. 25. Nine, two. Okay, so Is I'm going to... Fate points. I mean, ah, no, points. Ah, I already used it. Uh, go ahead and take 10 points of mental peril. I rolled high. Okay. Okay, so as you're feeling the stress, knowing that you don't have a whole lot of time, you can even hear the conversation between Bruno and the other woman. And this woman is effectively telling him to get the hell out of here. And he agrees to do so. And so you're known like, oh crap, uh, might be blown, might be blown, might be blown. What do you want to do? It's in the dark. I'll grab anything. So you're reaching around. Everything seems to be tied down. There's tarps, there's crates but you still can't see anything. There's no light coming into this room. Uh, I'll pull out a matchbox then and maybe do a quick match. Okay, so you strike the match really quickly. You get some light. It's still kind of dark, but you're able to see things now. And there's definitely some kind of covered covered tarp over what looks to be a row of crates and barrels that have been strapped against uh, the side of the ship uh, as tightly. And you have maybe about four to five feet worth of room between the, the end of the ship and where this kind of false wall is that you came in from. What do you want to do? Uh, I'm going to go searching anything I can find real quick with the light I have. Okay. Uh, so as you look around, pull up, you pull the tarp off as best you can, and you, you move the, the match around a little bit, the, the light giving, cutting through some of the shadows. And you notice a very familiar symbol painted, though, from what you could tell, likely has been tried to get scraped off or has just faded. But you can see the very contours, the remnants of the sigil, the symbol of the Plumhawk Trading Company, the very company that fired you months ago. Everybody, Jeff here. Just want to say thank you for listening to episode eight of the Adventures in Lollygagging podcast. Now, we goofed a little bit this episode with what surprise does and does not allow. The most glaring issue was that that underwater siren should have probably gotten a full surprise turn. And also, Zofia being defenseless probably shouldn't have gotten a reaction. Uh, if you want to read more about Zvihander's surprise mechanics, check out page 240 in the revised core rulebook. We're all in agreement here that if we hadn't goofed, Sophia would probably be dead. So we've gone ahead and fired Melissa from the podcast, and she and I are getting a divorce. And I think at least one of those is probably untrue. Anyway, Melissa will definitely be back in episode nine. Anyway, if you ever spot an error and feel like reaching out to correct us, you can catch me on Twitter at Lollygagger Co., or you can contact us through our website at thelollygaggers.com. Bottom line, I remind Melissa every morning, first thing, that Zofia's on borrowed time. Sometimes when I'm feeling really creative, I send her an off-season Hallmark card, or when we're in a hurry, I go ahead and I make this silent but menacing throat slash. Her end's drawing near. Now, speaking of ends drawing near, I'm going to beg you once more for some Apple Podcast reviews. We would love them. Thank you to those who have already done it. And that's it. I'm done. Go listen to a coda about everyone's favorite inappropriate halfling, Chovy. Coda, when Chovy met Gretel. On the Isle of Austour, no creature outnumbers the rat.
organized, industrious, and apparently virile, they might one day usurp the top rung of the island's food chain. Today, however, was not that day, thought young Chovy, as he removed the broken carcass from his final trap. Tomorrow, too, was likely out of the question if the rats could not notice a simple pressure plate. Chovy shakes his far too light bag. Three rats. No self-respecting rat catcher could live off such a pitiful bounty. If only Chovy had a hound to help his new rat-catching venture, perhaps the bag would be heavier. Perhaps his competitors wouldn't chuckle and dismiss his efforts. But a hound meant more expenses. More expenses meant smaller profits, and he was barely making a profit as it was. Discouraged, the sun setting over the far waters to the west, Chovy heads back to the tavern. The soft sounds of a pipe drift over from a nearby island oak, where a bard troupe entertains a group of children, and Chovy thinks back to the folktale that inspired his choice of profession, wondering if perhaps a flute might be a better investment than a hound. At dinner in the tavern, he overhears talk of another mischief of rats by the old friary, never rebuilt after last summer's storms. It was the way the floodbringer wanted it, the local said. Leave it be, lest they bring the bigger waves, the stronger winds, and the leviathan itself. Too much superstition on the isle, Chovy thought. Too much nonsense filling people's heads. When the time came, when more coins filled his pockets, he'd make for the mainland, and things would be better. The sun gone, both moons out, Chovy decides to make good use of the cloudless night. The friary was built into the side of a hill, and if everyone on Alstour was honest, they'd admit to frequenting the site more for its bruise than anything else. After a quick survey of the grounds, lamp in hand, Chovy finds a small hole in the decaying floorboards leading downward. Holes like these likely meant rats, either rats or some other critter smaller and more agile than most folk. But Chovy wasn't most folk. Chovy was barely a quarter of most folk, a halfling of his stature specialized in the tight and narrow. No need for a hound to do what Chovy could do twice better himself. That was a theory, anyway. The first few yards of the hole bore through collapsed walls and floorboards, but eventually wood gave way to dirt and rock, the porous foundation on which most buildings were erected on Alstower. The ease with which a mischief of rats could tunnel beneath the surface was likely why rats seemed to love Alstower, Chovy reckoned. Delving deeper in hopes of finding a nest, Chovy slithers effortlessly through the bending tunnels, a complex and undulating network that no hound could navigate. The sound of squeaks echo from ahead, and when Chovy bursts through a mesh of thin roots, a dozen more small rats begin to scurry. Some find an exit, others attempt to burrow in a panic. A few even charge at him, but only a few. If they all would have worked together, Chovy thinks. If they all chose to swarm, things could have gone much worse for him. The nest sat in a pocket of earth big enough for Chovy to nearly stand, and as he does, he pulls out a torch, quickly lights it, and uses it to corner those rats who chose to linger. One by one, with a merciless glee, Chovy crushes rodent after rodent, filling his bag with carcasses and his heart with satisfaction. It is not until after the slaughter that Chovy notices the way he came. The only tunnel large enough for him has collapsed. The torchlight fading, his lamp no longer with oil, Chovy scrambles around the small pocket of earth, ripping away rocks and dirt and soil with his free hand, looking for another way forward, any way back up. He pulls his belt knife free and stabs at the limestone, dusty chunks falling to the ground, first small, then a few of greater size, and then one so big there was no way for him to avoid it. No way to dodge, nowhere to tumble. Later, perhaps hours, when his throat is dry from screaming for help, when his legs are numb from being pinned beneath a rock twice his size, the irony will dawn on him. A rat catcher, trapped in a nest of rats. The feeling of nibbling on his forearm interrupts his self-pity. With a blind swat, he misses whatever rat had returned to claim revenge. Reaching around for a weapon, his knife may be a sizable rock. Chovy's hand rests on the bag of rats, no longer filled to the brim. Were the rats eating each other? It was certainly possible. The thought of eating a few had even crossed Chovy's mind more than once. The bag moves then, on its own accord. Had he left one to live? 
He fishes his matchbox out of the pocket in his shirt, and light fills the small chamber. Crawling out of the sack is a long, slender rat, bigger in some ways, but certainly different than those he had seen in the nest on a first arrival. And from its mouth hung both tail and body of one of the smaller black rats with red eyes, dead as dead can be. Chovy and this rodent lock eyes for a moment, and then it darts away through a small tunnel the size of Chovy's fist. Every so often, this slender rodent would return, and each time it would dig into the sack of dead rats, remove one, spare Chovy a brief glance, and then dart away through a tunnel too small for Chovy. Anticipating the rodent's return, Chovy started handing over the carcasses. It was a curious thing, and this interaction was all that kept Chovy sane and awake. While the rodent was gone, Chovy would swig bits of water from his flask, would give in and finally gnaw away at a rat carcass when his stomach forced him to make hard decisions. He knew that he needed to build strength if he was to unpin himself. As more time passed, Chovy was down to the last rat in the sack. His rodent friend would surely be back to retrieve it soon. The final drip of water from his flask falls onto his tongue, and it is then that Chovy hears the voices. The sounds of earth being moved. The bark of a hound. Dirt then falls onto his face, and when he blinks it away, he can see rays of sunlight making their way into the chamber. After half an hour, the sun floods into the chamber, blinding Chovy until a large shadow blocks out the light. When he opens his eyes again, Chovy sees the silhouette of two humans, two rat catchers, ones he has known and he has seen for some time. They both burst into laughter. Well, ain't that a sight, one of them manages to say between the laughs. Most peculiar looking rat I ever seen. Despite their jokes, one of the two rat catchers climbs down into the chamber, unpins Chovy, and hands him upward to the other as if they're passing along a baby. On the way to the barber surgeon's hut, Chovy's rescuers explain, There is some ferret-looking creature sitting up a trail of rats all the way from the outside of the friary, down beneath the earth, and to whatever small pocket Chovy had found himself in. Smart little thing. Found us a fortune. A week later, his wounds, if not his pride, healed. Chovy is back to work. The barber surgeon mentioned an infestation at the Reeves home's south side of the aisle, a few hours' walk. Along the way, Chovy sees and hears the troop of bards regaling children once more with song and story and when he reaches into his bags to find a penny to toss it over, he gives a start so loud one of the musician misses a note. Something moves inside the bag, something furry, something rodent size. Chovy grabs the creature, ready to snap its neck blindly, but something gives him pause. When he pulls the creature out of the sack, he finds a ferret, and not a rat, staring back at him. It is his true savior, his new friend, and a damn size better partner than a hound.